prayer and fasting is important but let me tell you before your prayer and fasting will make sense and have value in the spirit your heart condition must be right the desire and the desperation to see Jesus revealed and glorified in your life do you know you always hear me give this example imagine that God opens your eyes to the prophetic and a millionaire or a billionaire billionaires are all over your church or your ministry you literally can look at them and God opens your eyes and you see what they have in their account you've already bought sharp sand to build your house and you are limited there's there's no money you've calculated everything your engineer has told you 300 million will build a solid structure for you and the people trust you that's when you will know whether you are saved or not because one spectacular prophetic word and see human beings when they trust you they become vulnerable to you sincerely you can tell someone look you have one billion two hundred and fifty thousand ah yes that's true oh yeah the other part i won't touch the one billion but that other slice give on to caesar what you, know, you can twist anything and just because you are talking and the person is falling while you are talking does not mean it is god that is behind it you see i told you that you can misuse the anointing there is a level of charismatism that the anointing brings there is an aura it's a fragrance it can attract everything to you that is the reason why people have to be dead to self are we together consecration and intimacy proverbs 23 and verse 26 this has become an anthem in my life and i'm praying that someone will finally get that revelation please look up my son give me mine give me thine many people are giving god offerings many people are giving god pulpit god does not want your pulpit he's not looking for your offering your tithe all of those things are secondary let me tell you sincerely if you want power with god koinonia hear me what god wants is your heart i can tell you by the authority of scripture by the privilege of learning from the fathers and by my own experience if you are genuinely anointed genuinely anointed of god there is almost a godlike worship that people can bring around you because of the all surpassing manifestation of the excellency of god in your life even you sometimes you will look at yourself and say my god who am i i know what the anointing can do believe me and if you are not broken before god and especially our generation of ministers small grace here small anointing and that's it you see people misbehaving all around with the anointing small prophetic small apostolic and all kinds of things and god just withdraws the more he wants to give you because when god tests you with it you are rude you are lawless you are indisciplined you are you are you are rebellious you don't have any regard for authority god says no this little we've given this guy let's leave it there if we multiply this anointing you will kill everybody it means people will start kneeling down lick your shoe worship you call you king of kings then they will receive healing and go another person will do that kind of thing go and read the stories of people i'm not being sarcastic who did not allow god to walk on their hearts preachers let me encourage you co-laborers in the gospel let's be careful how we impart graces on people just because people are committed and their hearts are open does not mean they are prepared let God vet them so that you do not anoint people who will be a casualty to you and others history has taught us a lesson anointing people unprepared will always lead to casualty we are all students in the school of the spirit don't get me wrong it's like carrying your car and giving your 12 or 13 year old child the way children are brilliant now one can even drive with his eyes closed children are have mastered the art of surprising everybody But the chances are excellent that that child he will most likely be the only one with that car among his contemporaries and his pride not incompetence that will kill that child do you know what it means to carry the grace 
that grants you access to the destinies, the loyalty, the finances of people. It was our father in the Lord, Baba Adeboye, who made a statement one time. And he said, by the grace of God, if he needs a shirt today, by the privilege of the influence God has given him, he can make one statement and say, brethren, I need a shirt. And he said, literally without exaggeration, his size can finish in the market because everyone will want to go and do you know what it means to have that level of influence don't tell me i will be fine are you seeing why god works on our hearts you can speak to someone and say in the name of jesus christ may the lord lift you and in two weeks he comes back he has become a billionaire and the person comes to you as a billionaire and say man of god i'm still your boy oh good news to the ear of a preacher a billionaire is your boy are you learning tonight while you are laughing please make sure you understand what I'm saying God demands death to the flesh if you must carry genuine power billionaire is your boy and can say sir it looks like you are not happy is there any problem what can I do for you and Satan comes to stand by you and says is this how you are going to allow remember your childhood remember how you suffered now is your chance and yet the spirit of god tells you do not touch one naira from that man rather sow into his life and bless him and you say i reject that spirit that that the spirit that is not an economist to use your brain and know that this will flow from i mean Can you be so anointed that God places you in the midst of greatness and you still have self-control? There are many wealthy people today who run away from churches, respectfully speaking, because they won't let them rest. Once the preacher is preaching, he's looking at everybody, but they know who he's talking to. And the people say, please, it's not a cause to be blessed. That's why most people don't testify. Because they know it's a risk. Oh, this is what God has done. We just floated two aircraft, I mean, one estate and all of that. And the preacher is clapping. And the man knows exactly what that clap means. See, I, I made a vow and a covenant that by the privilege of God's grace, I'm not saying it by the strength of the flesh, this ministry will never inconvenience anybody because of tea and bread. If God will not provide the wisdom to fund this assignment, I will honorably go back home and sit down. It's better to sit down and not do ministry but have your integrity. Are we together now? Consecration and intimacy with God.